Welcome to the AFC Champions League highlights and the best of match day one. We kick off the season with the Group B clash between tournament debutants, Vigalta Sendai and Thai FA Cup winners, Buriram United. The 2012 J-League runners-up were favourites to win, but the Thai club were keen on proving that they were no pushovers. Sirwak, uh, goalkeeper, just his uh, defence in order here. Takes a shot at goal, it's a decent one, just so wide off the upright that time. Good strike at goal. Well intercepted that time. Defended well, Bururam, but uh, well, it spoke too soon. And that's been given away, this should be the opening goal. And I'm not sure how we missed it, but Nuto will be livid with himself. It was an open goal and somehow he's uh, just put it Pass the upright. And uh, Uita delivered a box into the delivered the ball back about into the box, but he's uh, looking for a penalty. I'm not sure uh, if it's a foul. Oh, for, hand, for a handball there. Can he make up for that miss by Muto early on? Steps up. And he clearly puts it in the back of the net. 1-0 to Vigalta Sundai. And they finally have uh, broken the deadlock here after 50 minutes. Oh, well, great opportunity. Plays it across here. He's got to push forward quickly. Takes a shot at goal. I think he was... Uh, might have just been looking for Ryang. to the near post, it is the equaliser, yes, uh, put it up, have found it, and is that man who has, uh, well, gave the uh, penalty away, he's uh, made a bend, and he has found the equaliser, the captain, the lead from the front, it's Jung Soo, and uh, that is the final whistle here at the Sendai Stadium. In Sendai City, it is uh, one apiece for the final score here at the Sendai Stadium. Bukultai Sendai 1, Buriram United 1. Groupies are the match day one tie took place at the Seoul World Cup Stadium in the Korean Republic, where FC Seoul entertained Jiangsu Senti. The Chinese club were unprepared for the hammering that was in store for them. It's a nice looking ball again. Escudero doesn't have too much support. The shot, oh, wonderfully placed. So well done by the man in form. Dejan Damjanovic once again strikes for his club and he does it with a plumb. Very comfortable in possession at the moment. Damjanovic. Uribe, that's another return ball. Oh, great goal. Second one for FC Seoul. And it was again the wonderful passing that led to that movement. Another chance for a goal. Across the face from Molina. There's a chance here to make it three, and it's an easy one. It's a second goal for Union Lock. Again, out of not very much. But they were caught napping at the back there, Jiangsu Sainty. Two from Union Lock, one from Dejan Damjanovic. And probably a few more to come, especially with this move now. Just needs a good touch. And that is the side of a man on form. Dejan Damjanovic. With the volley, 4 0. He missed an absolute sitter a little bit earlier on, but he makes no mistake this time. He's got across the goal. They finally get one back here. And it's Salihi with the first goal of his career here at Jiangsu City. 
They've worked much harder in the second half, and I think, honestly, FC Seoul would be rather disappointed with themselves to have conceded. Oh, another touch. A nice touch. This could be five. It is. And it's the first goal of the evening for Molina. And there you go. Mohsen Turki blows time on a very, very one-sided game. And the final score here in this AFC Champions League match, match day one at the Seoul World Cup Stadium. It's FC Seoul 5, Jiangsu Sainty 1. So FC Seoul led the way in Group B after match day one, with Buriram and Vigalta forced to settle for a point each. Buriram and Jiangsu will play hosts to the K-League side and the Japanese club respectively on match day two. Over to Group F now, where first encounter saw Chinese champions Guangzhou Evergrande open up their doors to 2007 champions of Asia Urawa Reds. It was the first meeting between the clubs and the Southern China Tigers were keen on exploiting home advantage to get the better of their Japanese rivals. It's Buruchi and this could be dangerous for the Red Diamonds. Buruchi, what's he going to do? And that's goal number one. Guangzhou Evergrande finally make the breakthrough and it's Lucas Barrios. But let's not forget the architect of that goal, Buruchi the Brazilian. Crafting that perfectly, and that's exactly what the fans have been waiting for. What a save! That is a spectacular move by Nobuhiro Kato as he denies Dario Konka, and that's a trademark Konka shot. as far as the Reds are concerned. We've touched 19 minutes and three minutes of out of time as what we have, Maruchi slips that in. Could this be another worry? Noble Hero Kato with a very good stop. And that is goal number three. Keita Suzuki will regret that for the longest period of time. It's now 3-0, Guangzhou Evergrande a scramble in the box. Good stop by Nobuhiro Kato, but oh, the damage being done there. Who they did beat 5-1 last year. And that's the final whistle as Guangzhou Evergrande pull off a very convincing victory over a rather beleaguered Rava Red Diamonds. It's Guangzhou Evergrande 3, Rava Red Diamonds 0. From China. We head to Thailand, where Montong United braced themselves for an onslaught from former champions Jombuk Motors. The history books favoured the K-League side, who were making their seventh appearance in the contest, while the Thai premiers were making their first. Target. Now John Book have a chance to play it in to him once again. Short crisp passing here from the Korean side. A play goes down in the box, and the referee immediately, without a doubt, points to the spot. A right look there on the face of the Wantong defender. And Lee Dong Guk smashing it home to the bottom corner. And Jumbuk Hyundai Motors have taken the lead here against Wantong United. Linz. Siaka once again, Siaka with a great ball forward. Dangda twists, turns and he falls down in the box. And the referee has come and well, he's given a yellow card. It's another penalty. Tough. Mwang Tong United. They score as well. Cheeky, cheeky little lob into the box. 
or into the goal rather from Mario Durovsky. Free kick for John Book. Wira to be tested, but Wira can do nothing about it. It's a bullet header from the substitute. Kevin Rees sends the ball home, much to the delight of his coach Fabio Lefundes. Well to it and it's gone in! Smiles on all the faces of Hong Tong players. But I can't tell you just yet who had the final touch. Too heavy a touch, too poor a pass. That's how it's finished here at the Tan Dome Stadium. Final score Muang Tong United 2, John Book Hyundai Motors 2. So a solid start for China's Guangzhou Evergrande then, with maximum points in the bag. Elsewhere, Guangzhou United held their own against Jombok to share the spoils. Jombok next hosts Guangzhou for the second time in two years, while the Reds slug it out with Guangzhou United in Japan. Over in Group G, J League title holders San Freche welcomed Junior Corps to their domain at the Big Art Stadium in Hiroshima. The Japanese club were playing in the comfort zone, but that wasn't enough for them to weather the attack by the Uzbek club. Higashihara and the lads just trying to surge ahead. It's Sato turns that in and Nesterov affects another good stop. Jurev takes the free kick. Bit of a tussle there. Bunyot Court persisting now. Might be a good chance here for them. And they just nailed the first goal. Persist in space. And they kept it nice and subtle. Bunyot Court had the lead here. And Alexander Paisher has made sure it's now 1 0. Bunyot Court. Lazic. Kafarov, Tureyev, it's Marco Blasic, what can he do, Nishikawa comes to the rescue and that is a sitter that has been missed, what an opportunity to strike the ball home on the rebound. Well sometimes when opportunity strikes and it takes you by surprise it's a bit difficult to get behind it. Smart move there by Fozil Musae. And that's goal number two. Musae bounces a ball. Opportunity takes that all the way through. It's a solo run, a solo effort, and it's goal number two. San Fete Hiroshima. The defense just caught napping behind. And this is really rather dismal for the J League side. And that's the final whistle right here at the Hiroshima Big Art Stadium as Bunyot Kor get a solid start in their campaign as we finish right here in Japan. It's San Fete Hiroshima nil, Bunyot Kor 2. Over in neighboring Korea, Group G's other representatives took to the field at the Pohang Steelyard. While the match in Japan was full of surprises, the clash in Korea would turn out to be a stalemate affair. Beijing now with a free kick. And they conjure up something here. It's a good ball hit. Just couldn't get a hitter that time. Just a minute of injury time. Guerra there, I think. Pardon. It takes a strike here. This is the opening goal. The ball was bobbing around, but I think there was an infringement. Chai. Good ball. 
thanks of Wong who uh, took it on the volley. Both uh, best chances of the half uh, falling to Beijing. Once again, uh, Long Paul looking for Gueron. Sajayi. Puts it on here. Takes a shot at goal. It's uh, clearly taken that time. Hua Hyong. Calls the ball. It's uh, palmed away that time. Wang Zhe was a good attempt at goal. Kick uh, with the cross. He's got a cutback. This is a great chance and a great save that time from Yamta. What a great save, and they know that was a great opportunity for Pohok to go ahead. The credit must go to Yamcha, who reacted uh, so quickly. Freya just looking at his watch there. Long well played in. Good defending. And the referee has blown his whistle here at the Pohang Steel Yard to a goal and straw. Chin Soon almost brought a goal for Pohang Steelers, but it ends the goal is here at the Pohang Steel Yard. A goal in each half at San Pete Hiroshima was enough for Bunyo Core to top the group table after match day one. While Beijing and the Steelers shared the points after a goalless draw in Korea. Beijing and San Preche meet in China for their next game, while Pohang's finest travel to Uzbekistan to take on Bunyot Kor. The first match in Group H saw Huizhou Reno make their debut in the championship against second-timers Kashiva Resol. Over 28,000 turned up for the event and it was heartache for the Guizhou faithful with Resol doing just enough to come out tops. Towards Muslimovic, knocks it down. Easily taken care of again, but nowhere that's going to go, the ball, the box. It's a really nice take by Sugeno. Slimovic, or rather, was that Nano? Has it gone in? Yes, it has now. Cleo with the opening goal for Quasua Reysol. We've been looking for this sort of delivery. It was a nice looking one, wasn't it, from George Wagner? On the stroke of half time, the Brazilian strikes. Again, down the line, that's good work. Muslimovic uses his strength. Was there a foul? No, says the referee. Is he going to go on his own? Yes, he does. And is that the right choice? And those forwards are also frustrated. Baptista, partly furious with his defense. So, you know, organizing his defense, he's. Really had very, very little to do here. Who's got two of his own players in front here? Oh, off the crossbar! What a chance for Svedan Vesimovic. They can be quite good going forward. But they needed to do that earlier in the game because they've ended up losing this one in their maiden Champions League match. Final score here in this AFC Champions League 2013 match. It's Guito Renha nil, Casual Race all one. If goals were scarce in the first Group H match, the second would prove to be a drought on match day one. As Australian Premier's Central Coast Mariners took on the mighty Suwon Bluewings of the Korea Republic. <laughs> Ball's loose. Here we have a chance. A shot. Easily saved by Trung Shin Ryong. And it's going to come down to both teams to see who has the stamina, who has the wherewithal. And 
here we have the first chance, the first best chance, shot, and again, unbelievable, Mitchell Duke coming on and having an amazing chance, and what a chance it would have been for him. And really, that's the kind of thing that she was really going to have to try and do now. Oh my gosh! Nearly disastrous there for Central Coast. And that would have been an absolute nightmare. The ball inches away from going into his own goal. It's a nice back flick on. And the referee's called it. Penalty. Quack, quack, soon. Oh, and yes, Kwak Kwang Sun there, without any hesitation, lifting his hand to hit the ball. Sadly, no longer does the hand of God get away with these kind of things. And it's a brilliant save, Jung Sung Rong, the Korean international keeper, denying Central Coast Mariners, denying Nick Montgomery. He dove brilliantly to his right. It was a good taking penalty there. Power behind it. But well read. Fans there showing their displeasure. And there we have it. Nil-nil for both sides. Central Coast Mariners here at Suwon. Central Coast having plenty of opportunities but not being able to convert. A single goal in China saw Raysol jump to the summit of Group H with Central Coast and Suwon Blue Wings two points behind the group leaders. The Kashiwa Club entertained Central Coast next, while Guizhou will look to get their campaign off the ground at the expense of the Blue Wings. In West Asian Fair, there were home victories on offer for Tractor Sazi and Al Shabab. The Iranian outfit registered a comfortable 3-1 win over Al Jazeera, while the Saudi club saw off Qatar's El Jaish 2-0. Their respective wins earned Tractor Sazi and Al Shabab maximum points and joined A Group leadership, with Al Jazeera and El Jaish still on the points hunt when they host the Saudi outfit and the Iranian club next. Home comforts were the order of the day in Group B, with Pakhtakor winning 1-0 over Al Ittifaq and Lekwia overcoming the challenge from Al Shabaab Al Arabi by a single goal. Those victories saw both clubs play maximum points before they fight each other for group leadership on match day two. Al Etifaq and Emirati outfit Al Shabab Al Arabi will aim for their first points of the competition when they clash in their next encounter in Dubai. Over in Iran, Sepahan crashed Al Nasser of the UAE 3 0. As for Al Ahli, the 2012 runners up posted a comfortable 2 0 home win over Qatar's Al Gorafa. So three points each for Sepahan and Al Ahli after their opening encounters of the campaign with the Iranian outfit ahead by a single goal. Al Gorafa will aim to get their campaign back on track when they host Sepahan next, with Al Nasser harboring similar intentions when they meet Al Ahli. It rained goals in Group D with Emirati club Al Ain registering a comfortable 3-1 win over Saudi rivals Al Hilal. While the match between Qataris Al Ryan and Iran's Esteglal saw both clubs net three apiece. Honours even then for Al Ryan and Esteglal after match day one, which meant that Al Ain were the only team to grab maximum points. Esteglal will host Al Ain on the next match day, while Al Ryan travel to Riyadh to face Al Hilal. That's it for this week. We'll be back in a fortnight with action from match day two. See you then.